welcome back everyone to our mega monster pickups video we've got tons of stuff to talk about tons of stuff to show just you know it's gonna be a long one so get a drink ready i've got a drink the poison of the day is monster yeah rock my guts and <laughs> rock my guts away um i've got stuff written down people i've seen uh blackpool nottingham there's tons of stuff. Like I say, it's going to be a long one. So hide that blanket. There was a funny story about this sofa throw. Is it's really expensive sofa throw. I don't know. It's a woman thing, isn't it? Sofa throws. And I was cutting. Quick show of the games room there. But uh, I've got my satin stuff up there now. But the brackets. The way the brackets sit. I needed to just move them up a bit. So I had to cut some cardboard. There's like a thin layer of cardboard there just to get it over the um, the bracket so they sit on the flat. And I was cutting on top of this really expensive sofa throw and I've cut through it three times. So Amanda was really pleased about that. I said it's just a sofa throw and she was like, my mum bought me that. So whatever, we're off on a tangent already. So. What shall we start with? Oh, I'll do Nottingham first because it was the furthest away. Um, another thing about these pickles is a lot of it, you may think there's a lot of, damn, I've spent a lot of money. And I have, but it's this is spread out over like months and months and months. Um, actually, I won't do Nottingham first. I'll quickly do, I've got some more records to show. And I don't, well, gaming records, but I. I mean, judging from the video I did, I don't think many people are interested in that, so I'm just clicking the fire through them. Because um, some people might be interested in them. But the first one, I actually bought this yesterday. It's an early Christmas present from my mother-in-law. Uh, went in HMV, and they had this in there. I've seen it in there before, and it's, it, it was marked for £42.99. Um, it was in the clearance bin for 20 quid, and it is Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle on vinyl. <clears throat> and it's double it's a double vinyl clear it's got a rabid white colour I whatever that means what is that colour um and this is like textured obviously it's still partially in the cellar thing um it comes with some pop up like paper things you can make but uh supposedly it's a good soundtrack it's by the person who did Banjo Kazooie um Perfect dark, I want to say. Lots of rare stuff. So for twenty quid, I was just like, oh, I'll have it for Christmas. Uh, so that one, kitchen B bag. Oh, she bought one of these. They're like ninety nine p when you get them. I don't. I'm not too keen on them because they don't sit on the shelf very well. Because the if you know if you collect the vinyls, you know what I mean. They don't sit very well in these bags. Um, but it, her intentions were good, so I can't blame them for that. Um, next one, I'm not actually looked at these. I've not even opened them because I'm an idiot and I've got spending too much money. Uh, Data Disc Sonic CD. This is a beast. Um, and I believe it's free coloured vinyl, the limited edition one. I've got to open it because if you don't open them, they'd start basically crushing the. Uh, Crushing them out of shape with the pressure from the cling, the uh, the seal on. But uh, yeah, it's three vinyls on that one. Um, so it's a good soundtrack. So guilty, I've not opened it. Um, I'll probably open it after when because I stack these up in my wardrobe for when I do videos, and then I uh, I'll show them and then I'll put them out. But if I was to sit here and get each individual record out, it would be all, all day, so... <laughs> um, ooh, what is this one? As quickly as possible, this one was really well wrapped. Um, Bloodborne. Bloodborne, original soundtrack. Um, now, I've got the Dark Souls box set, if you've seen previously. Um, I really like the soundtracks to Dark Souls games, and this is pretty much the same sort of thing, so... Um, again, this is a limited edition. It comes on green vinyl, I think, or something like that. Excuse me. 
Um, vinyl, real, real pricey. I mean, they cost a lot. I think this is like, once you pay postage, it's about 40 quid, This is a lot of money. But if you look this up on eBay or wherever you, you get your vinyl from, this is the, the prices they shot, shoot up to are just ridiculous. Um, especially the limited edition coloured vinyls. Um, <clears throat> Me. I can't get it back in. There we go. Close enough. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like they'll put the pre order up, and you've got like, I want to say, a, probably like hours to order the limited edition one before it sells out. So it's kind of like you can't really go, I'll have to think about it. You just have to, just have to order it. Uh, another date this one here, this is one I missed. Um, I believe I was going to a barbecue and I set the reminder on my phone and then I drank way too much and I was just like Wee! when I got home and I was just like oh, I forgot to order it um, and it's it, again it's a data disc one it's the limited edition one they had the normal one but I was just like I'll hold out because they normally after a while they have a few left over which they keep back for replacements or ones which go missing but this is the Thunder Force 4 official soundtrack. Um, I believe it's three records. Um, and the, the disc on these is amazing. I believe they're black and they've got like grey like squiggles all in them. So that's awesome. And, and, comes with this sticker. Oh yes. You can't have a date disc without having the corresponding coloured sticker with it. So I currently have a full set of Day Disc as it stands, not limited edition. I jumped on the, the wagon a little late for the, but I have probably most of them. I think it's like the first five, which I don't have limited edition coloured vinyl, which I'm not massively bothered about. But um, I suppose they yeah, haven't waited for that. But um, right, quickly, this last one is amazing and guilty. I've still not opened it, uh, but I've seen people unboxing it. And it looks absolutely incredible. And I'm guilty. I've not even played the... I have played the game briefly. And it's one of those games... It's a Dreamcast game. But I want to get it on GameCube. Because it's just, an, just a better version. So there you go. There's a hint. There's a hint at what it could be. But this is just a labour of love. love. The guy who did this. Obviously. Anyway. It's very passionate about this. Um, and it's from a company called Wayo Records, and it is Skies of Arcadia Eternal Sun track. And this is absolutely amazing. So happy to have it. Um, not cheap. I think it came from France. It's based in France, this record company. I want to say it's just like a, one guy who runs it. But uh, I believe it's got like an art book in there as well. Could be two records in there. I'm not sure. Could be three records. I'm not sure. Should have checked. But um, they could still be in stock. <coughs> I believe you can get a limited edition music box as well. If that's your, if that, if that's your thing. Um, which is like 200 euros or something. Um, another reason why it's expensive is because the euro and the dollar are so shit at the moment. So, But um, I bought another couple of things from the same company. Wayo Records, and it had these, and I was just going to get the first one, and then I thought, you know what, I've not played the second one, but I'm guessing it's just as good, and probably one of my favourite uh, RPGs of the last generation, it is Nino Kuni, Wrath of the White Witch, on a dual CD, these are quite cheap, they're about 14 euros, which for double CD is not too bad, um, and then obviously there's a the second one there, which I do need to play. Um, so it's not as good as the first one, but it's hard to beat. It's hard. It's hard to beat perfection. So yeah, strong words by me there. Anyway, that's out of the way. Records done. There's another record actually, but it's part of something else. Um, so anyway, the Nottingham Game Show. Um, I was looking forward to going to this one. It's very, I'm not say local, but it is the next city over from me. So it only takes about 
25 minutes to get there, 20 minutes or something like that. So it was in Marriott, I want to say. Um, and the, the venue was actually quite nice. I won't say nice, it's all right. But uh, the it's quite big and spacious. Uh, and they had like two halls, a bigger hall, which was mainly full of like bigger sellers, um, the usual suspects who have stupidly overpriced shit. Um, and then there was like a smaller room, which had, for the most part, just collectors like me. And uh, I think there was... Holly there, um, Tootie and Rob, um, or Pete, old school variety face. Um, there's quite a few of them in there, so it was quite nice. Uh, it's just getting into the venue was a bit of a bastard because you had to basically park up in the loading bay, um, go up the elevators through the kitchen. Um, so basically, it was all right in the morning because I got there pretty early. So we were sort of the first ones to, we just got in. Um, but at night, it was like, uh Because I guess most people were just like, right, let's go. And whereas me and Manda sort of just held back and sort of waited for everyone, most people to leave, uh, which is probably the better idea. Plus, you have to pay for parking there, which is not too bad. There's, there's a cop across the road. I think it was like £6.50, so it's not too bad. But yeah. Great day, sold loads of shit, um, happy, cleared out some stuff as always. Um, probably one of my better events for selling stuff. A, a lot of people say the first one they do of most events is normally the best one because um, that area has been starved of retro, you could say. so. But it's not always the case. Um, Doncaster's is still probably my favourite one to go to. Um, such a big, massive venue, easy to get to. But anyway, so the people I met there, I mentioned most of them. I'm just going to quickly check this on else. Um, Darren McCowan, I believe that. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Um, lovely chap. I think last time I spoke to me, done his GameCube set. I think, he's is he doing his PS2 set? Let me know, Darren. Are you doing a full PS2 set? Because that is crazy. Um, and we briefly spoke, and I was... Uh, I was basically... I said, go to this stall um, now, because he's got some excellent prices. So, But he came back, and he, he got some great bits. So I'm happy for him. But, uh, yeah, so I got a couple bits from that stall. That was actually in the in the bigger hall, but it was... I think he said he was a collector, so there wasn't... There was some, you know... People like me having stores in there. Um, who? I think that's everyone. Oh, how could I forget? Glory Hunter and um, Jess, they were there all day and they helped me uh, sell stuff. So very thank you for that. That is, um, so they didn't have to, but you know, it was very nice for them to stay there and help me. Um, when you it's such a busy event and it's just nice to have a couple more people on the store just to keep their eyes peeled. Uh, I'm not saying that anyone's going to rob anything, but it has happened at previous events. People have, stuff has gone, has wandered off. So uh, it's just nice to have more people around and someone to talk to. Um, not that I can't speak to Amanda, um, but it's just nice to have someone there who's as passionate about games as me. So thank you, Scott and Jess, for that. But uh, what did I buy? What did I buy? Uh, some more like bits. So... <laughs> There was a chap selling these. Um, he had a, a boxes and boxes of them. And it's a game I wanted. I believe it comes with all the DLC. It's a 360 game. It is Two Worlds. I think it's called the Velvet Edition. It comes in this funky little box. Um, £10 sealed. And, and I thought that was a great price until I went to Blackpool and he was there selling for a fiver. Damn it. <laughs> so I was like, ah. But uh, whatever. It's 10 quid. Um... It's a fairly decent price. I suppose it's a good game. Um, yeah. So I will check out that out one day. I like I like my RPGs. So interest. the first one was... Yeah. Shit. <laughs> but I suppose they improved a lot on that one. So that was that. Um, what else did we get? Oh, this. There's a chap in the smaller room... I had a lot of sealed Xbox games, and he had this one in there. 
The man of, I have. A, I think I've got this one. Where's my Xbox? Oh, it's just there. I recently picked this up from CX um, as part of my CX copy exchange videos. Um, and he had it with the six quid sealed, and it is obscure for the Xbox. So it's quite nice. I think it's about 12 quid in CX, I'm not sure. Um, but for a sealed copy, I've put, put it in an extra bag to protect it there. Um, but it's not, it was marked for six, you can do it for five, so that's quite nice. But he had some, uh, he had some nice stuff, lots of sealed Xbox games. I think Scott got a, excuse me, uh, Project Zero, I believe on the Xbox, so that's quite nice. And the rest is all from one stall. The chap um, who I told Darren McCall about, so Darren McCowan, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so I bought a couple first thing in the morning, and then I went back and bought, I think it was just that one. Maybe. It's just that one. I'm not sure. I'll just show them all. But uh, I believe there was some sort of discount on these. I want to say maybe it was that one. <laughs> maybe it was them ones. Ten. This one doesn't have a price on. Four. Four. I don't know. There was a little bit of a discount. Um, but anyway, what we got was a sealed copy of Zombie Zone. And this is a 505 Game Street. And I am going for a full 505 Game Street set. Shout out to Rollercore, Eddie. I think he's missing two, I think he said in Blackpool. Um, so we've got that one sealed, not too much of the sealed or not. And I picked up Zone of the Enders for the second running. And this was four pounds, quite nice. I believe, does that come with an extra disc? We'll find out. I'm gonna take these out of these bags anyway. <coughs> oh no, it's just got a there's like a pamphlet in there. I'm thinking of the, the first one, which came with the demo. Um, then we got Toku Toku Bot Plus. Played this on PS3. It's quite a fun little game. Um, not massively expensive. See, so only had two quid on it. I think it's four pounds in CX, so it's quite nice for find there. And it's quite a fun game as well. And then there's this one. PS1 game, needs a new case, but it was marked for £4, it's Br Brahma Force, I want to say, looks like a mech game basically, Get out of the bag, so the cases, but I'd say it's one of those games you don't see that often, um, but yeah, it's in nice condition, um, so it's nice to have a game with a picture on the other side of the inlay because normally it's just white so that's quite funky <clears throat> uh, next up is a PS2 game I actually picked this up with Scott when we went car booing um, for where do we go um, Arcade Club so that's what I should have mentioned we went to Arcade Club in Leeds yeah that was before then yeah my bad. I picked this up at the car boot, American copy for a pound, but it is Way of the Samurai 2. Now this was six pounds. I think it's about that in CX. Could be slightly less. Could be a fiver. But um, I might have bought that for a fiver anyway. After the discounts. And the last thing, I definitely picked this up at the end of the day. I'm going to pick this up. Um, and it is Yokai Watch 2 Psychic Spectre for the 3DS. And yeah, that marks up as a tenner. I'm sure this is about £18 in ZX. So when I saw it, I was just like, I'll grab that. And yes, yeah, in lovely condition. Did these come with manuals or is it just like a load of pamphlet shite? Could just be a load of pamphlets, to be honest. But uh, yeah, for, for tenner, I was just like, yeah, I'll get that. Throwing everything down there. <laughs> so that was uh, Nottingham. 
great event. Probably definitely going to go next time. Um, maybe because I was in such a great location, I was sort of like, as soon as you come through the door, there was my stall. So, and some people, you know, some people were like, as soon as they see something they want, they won't look around, they'll just buy it. Maybe that's why I did so well. Don't know. But yeah, great event. Definitely check it out if you're around Nottingham. And um, yeah, so on to the next event. So the next event, which I've just previously mentioned, was me, Glory Hunter, Jess and Amanda. We went to the arcade club in the new arcade club. So it's not that new, actually. It's been open a couple of months in in Leeds. Yes, yeah, in Leeds. I stopped at some shops on the way down. But uh, yeah, so the, the new arcade club is amazing. I think I prefer it to the other one. It's a bit more, not say, it's on full, different floors again, but um, it just seems laid out slightly better. I find the one in, is it Manchester? <laughs> or is it Birmingham? I'm sure it's Manchester. Um, it's in like an old factory and it's gets like between the floor, really cold and the, the bathrooms are in the, in the stairway where it's really cold. So it's a bit, yeah. I can't remember about the cold because I work in I work outside all day. So, but uh, yeah, so they had some great machines there. They had the House of Dead Scarlet Dawn, probably one of the highlights of the event. Um, what else did they have? Uh, loads of gun games and stuff. And then on top of all, they had the VR thing. They have that in the other one, but it's like a separate floor, so it's quite nice. Because in the um, the other one, so it's in with the. Thing. I think they moved it now actually. I think Scott mentioned they moved it into a smaller room in Manchester one. So better go and um Beat Saber. But there was um there's like another little room which had PCs and that like couch with some uh, I think it was a switch set up with Mario Kart on. And then like a row of consoles with like new games on like Borderlands and Gears of War. So we had a quick I think I had a quick on Borderlands 3. Um them sort of games I don't really like sitting down in that environment and playing. I like to sit at home on my own. Or if there's you know, if it's co op with someone else. It's just a bit noisy in them events. But uh yeah. So Borderlands free, more of the same that was. Same as two and one. <laughs> but yeah, it was a great great night. Plenty of drinks were consumed. And then uh we walked home. I was quite no, we didn't walk home, we walked back to the hotel. Which when you're drunk, it's uh it's quite far. <laughs> uh there's not really any hotels around the arcade club. So the nearest one we, we pretty we got to the the nearest one which was a decent hotel was probably about a mile away. So it's not massively far, but when you've been playing games all night and drinking, you'd be like ah. But anyway, we stopped a few shops on the way down, picked up a couple of bits. Um, I think all these came from, this came from a charity shop. And um, this was in Pontefract. So we stopped off to go to, is it Console Yourself? Yep, Console Yourself. Um, this is in a British Heart Foundation, Two ninety nine, dollars I wanna say. For some reason I took the sticker off. Um, gun. For the Xbox 360, um, I convinced Scott to hand it to me because he thought he had it and then he didn't have it. But I was like, too late, it's mine now. Um, not a massively expensive game, but it's about six pounds in CX. Um, it's quite a fun game. I've already a thousand, got the thousand achievement points on this way back in the day. But um, I want to say, fairly tricky to find. I found it a few times, it's always like knackered. So nice find there. And these next two games were from a cash generator, cash converter, one of them, they're both the same, pretty much. Um, two original Xbox games, I think they're 99p each. We've got Far Cry Instincts and Futurama. I said they're both in really nice condition, so nice finds there. I said they're not much more in CX, but just for the condition, I just thought I'd grab them. And then we went to cons console yourself. A uh, great shop, loads and loads of stuff they've got in there, tons of stuff. I'm always a bit hesitant to buy stuff from shops like that because 
I, w I won't say they're overpriced, but they know the stuff. And obviously they're, they're a business, so they have to make money. You know, so I you know, can't expect them to be dirt cheap in these shops. Um, but I did pick up an Amiibo, funnily enough, because uh, I've never actually seen it like in the wild. And I thought I'd order it off the internet. Um, not sure if it's out of print now. But it is the Dark Souls Solaire Amiibo. And this was £20. Not sure if you can see that. Um, but yeah, I do want to get Dark Souls on the Switch at some point. It's such a great game. Um, challenging, but, you know, rewarding. So 20 quid. So I checked eBay and they were going for about 25-ish. So, grab that. I think Scott grabbed quite a few original Xbox games. There was nothing which really stood out to me. They had a Steel Battalion in there, and I know it's been in there for quite a while. But I think they wanted about 200, maybe more than 200. Um, I was just like, yeah, too much. I think Scott got his for about 160 at Doncaster, so I'll hold out a bit longer for that. And I have no room for it, because the game is nearly done, so... The room and space is it's kind of like what do I want to put out and what don't I want the rest gonna have to go in storage <laughs> until I get a bigger games room but after that we went to a another little town we weren't I don't think we were planning on stopping but we did stop and um, found a little local game shop some nice stuff in there I think it was quite big actually is it it was neon something maybe but like there was like games stacked to the ceiling. Um, but I didn't pick anything. I think Scott might have picked up a couple of original Xbox games. And then we went to another cash generator. Picked up these two games. I think they were 99p. Uh, Fast and the Furious Showdown. And the Dirt. Colin McRae Dirt. Again, not massively expensive in CX. I think that's about £6. So that's quite a nice find. And then we went to CX. And I picked up... Two things, no, three things. Um, I bought a 3DS game, but the first one was a PSP game, which the woman broke, so, so that was great. It was basically one of the fancy games, which comes with like a, a sleeve, cardboard sleeve on it, and there's like postcards and shit in it. Uh, but when she got the, the UMD out, she just sort of placed it on top and just pushed it and like cracked the case open. So I was just like, ah. And I think it was only like £8 or something. I don't have it to show because it was... I used a voucher, which is part of my CX Copy Exchange. Um, and there was a 3DS game, a, I want to say a Shigami Tensei 1, maybe. Um, again, that's not for this video. But one thing I did pick up with my with different a different voucher, not from the car boot, was this. Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Collector's thingy. What is it? It's just collects edition. Um, and they had two of these. And literally I said to the boy, oh, can I have a look at it? And he gets off the shelf. And I quick look at it. And then I was like, all right, I'm all right to compare it with the other one, see what's in better condition. So we sort of picked this one up, put that back, got the other one. And I'm just like, okay, so I had a look at that one. I think it was the second one was missing this sort of sleeve on the back like that and the box is a bit tatter so I was like I was like can I compare them and he's like yeah sure so he picks this one up and then I'm just like oh, I just want to compare them man um but it literally comes like this and that's how it comes pretty much I think the damaged one had some like packing peanuts in it which is what it's supposed to come with funnily enough um the why they did it like that I don't know but this one was missing these, it's just a skin for the to put on your PSVR. I don't know who'd actually put that on, stick that on your PSVR. But I was like, can I have that out of the other one to put in this one? Uh, this was 50 quid. I took the sticker off. But on the sticker, it doesn't mention them. So he was like, yeah, sure. Um, but some nice bits in here. Comes with this. This is pretty cool to me. It's like a free pouch for your PSVR. It's quite big, actually. Um, and there's, you can't see that, it's sort of embossed with the logo on the back. Uh, that's quite nice. Then there's the game. I've already got the game, but I'll probably sell the game now. I've got this version of it. This is the game in it. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, oh, there's actually a couple of bits in it. Um, the soundtracks, so that's quite nice. The one plus on the soundtracks. And then there is this keyring with Teddy on. Can't really see it, but focus is not on. I need to get a camera where the focus actually works properly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fifty pounds that was. So apart from the staff at that store being a bit useless, I don't like to call people useless, but can't be helped sometimes. So yeah, pretty good condition. It's got a big thumb thing there where someone's just yanked it open. Um, but apart from that, it's, uh, it's in alright condition. So that was that. And then obviously we went to the arcade club that night. And then went to the car boot in the morning. I don't have anything to show you from the car boot. Because it literally all went to CX. Um, I can't remember what I got. I got some right bits. I got a couple of Amiibos I think. I missed out on a couple because I didn't realise. There were some Amiibos thrown in. They were in with some Skylanders. And I'm just like, mm, Skylanders. And then I sort of, like, I was like, wait a minute. Glanced back and there was a chap looking at him. And he, I think he bought two of them, but he missed. He missed two, I think. Two? Yeah, something like that. But it's good money in Amiibos. So, um, car boot was, was all right. Didn't have to pay to get in early. Sometimes you go to a car boot and it's like more to get in early, early. Uh, but it was like the standard pound. Um so it's really weird, like, people just, like, in the boots, like, and I mean, like, I know people, I go to car boots and there's people, they'll go in the boots, but this is, like, the people pulls up, the people pull up, they open the boot and there's just, like, a free for to get in there, and it's just, like, you're standing there, like, oh my god, so, but so it got some more right bits, nothing, I think the best thing I got was a Star Wars Blu-ray, um, the, the six disc, film set on blu-ray i uh, got it for a fiver i think i traded that in for 20 quid so that's, that was nice um and i think i got a couple of games but, uh, so anyway and then we went to the next day we went to the retro games event in leeds um the one at the marriott I'm not sure what it's called i should really remember but uh, what did I get from there? I didn't get a massive amount. I've st ah, stacked the stuff on top of it. Um, I've got two... Two things, so not <laughs> not loads. Um, but, has it got a price on? Yes, it has. Um, say, quite expensive, I want to say. There wasn't really many, like, collectors like me just selling extras and their, their stuff. Um... I found this store, they had this American game. They had quite a few, but this was the only one which I think is exclusive to America. So it didn't come out over here. Not that I think of anyway, but it is. The Nightmare of Drugama for the PS2. Never heard of it. Looks like an RPG, <laughs> maybe. Revolutionary at once turn system. A turn-based style of gameplay where actions are executed rapidly. So, sounds like my sort of thing. And he had that up for £30. And I said, would you do 25 And he says, yeah. So, I was like, I'll take that. And there was a chat that had tons of like limited run games. And they were pretty overpriced, I want to say. Um, they were about eBay prices, to be fair. So, I suppose they weren't overpriced. Uh, but I had this one, and I played. I played this game. I think I got the sound, the the soundtrack on vinyl. But it is a uh, Hue for the PS Vita, and it was limited to two thousand three hundred copies worldwide. And he had twenty five on it. And I said, "We do twenty. He was like, "Oh no." Um, I think I got it for twenty two in the end, which you know I have actually seen on eBay recently. I think you can buy it now for like eighteen quid. But um, yeah. It's one of those things. So, another limited run Vita game. I wouldn't mind getting all the limited run Vita games, but some of them are really, really pricey. Um, 
and to find them over in this country, it can be tricky. Um, but yeah, so I have to find that. And that's all I got from the Leeds Retro Games event the Marriott. Again, I think it's got, got some alright bits. Um, there wasn't really anything which was standing out to me. But uh, but I thought we went to a quick look around Leeds. And we went to CX. And the Leeds and CX normally, it, it does have some alright bits to be honest. Um, I did pick up a few bits. Now some of it I can't show you because it was bought with a voucher from my CX Corp Exchange. But I've got a couple of bits which I've bought with, you know, other vouchers. Um, and literally this was, I'll show you these first actually. They had quite a few Sega Saturn games in there. Nice big stack of them. Um, and there's only these three I think I needed. I think there was another one actually, which was a bit... I don't know if it was Mr. the Manual, I can't remember. But I bought these three. Slightly... I can say I can't, <laughs> I can't remember what I paid for them. I think they were about 10 quid each. This one was definitely a tenner. Winter Heat, Sega Sport. Comes in this hard, these hard plastic cases. So normally these are in pretty good condition. I think she cleaned all the discs on these as well. So I think that was that. Oh, so there we go. It was ten pounds. It was on the side, not on them ones. I took it off because of the cardboard cases. We've got Blam Machine Head. I think this was. I want to say six pounds. This one. I think this was, this was definitely the cheaper one. The worst cases in the world. Not sure what it's about. <laughs> But another Saturn game for the collection. And then Gun Griffin. I want to say this is about 12 to 14 quid, this one. Goddamn cases are terrible. <laughs> um, again, nice condition. So, let's say she cleaned up the discs, so. Not bad. It's a mech game. So, it was that. I say I bought a couple of bits, but this is the only thing I can show you. Um, this was on the funny if they had the normal case out on the shelf, um, but they had the this is sort of the Dulux edition. They had this box behind the shelf, and it looked in really nice condition. And for the most part, it is it's a little bit dinged up, but it is Kingdom Hearts Dulux edition. I think the price is on the actual game case. Yes, so 28 quid, I thought that was a good price for, for what you get. Um, the normal game is like 15, 16 quid now, so. But uh, yeah, I need to play the second one before I play that. Ignore all the side ones and spin offs, I can't not be bothered <laughs> with them ones. Um, but there's some quite nice bits in this. So you get this pretty nice steel book. Sure, what's on the inside? Just more of the pattern. I think you can get a PS4 with this pattern on it. It looks a bit shit, to be honest. <laughs> um, and then there's a, it's a little art book. So some more right bits and bobs in there. I think there's must be a pin in there as well. I can do it. There we go, a little Kingdom Hearts pin. So when I saw the, the condition, I was like, you know what? There's no crushing apart from this side is slightly crushed. You're not gonna see that. But and then on top, there's like these weird like lines running through it. I don't know if it's like a printing error or something like that. But uh, yeah, so I grabbed them, thought it was pretty good. 41 minutes. Dear God, this is going to be a long video. We've not even got to Blackpool yet. So that was our trip to Leeds. Again, thank you to Scott and Jess for uh, putting up with me. <laughs> so after that, I will talk about Blackpool. The biggest event of the year. And there's a lot of people to mention. I'm not going to like start. I'm just going to fire through these people. 
So Scott, Glory Hunter, uh, Tutti and Rob, uh, Pete Armour on a retro tip. Um, and he also mentioned, actually there's a chap who, who Pete introduced me and Scott to um, Sorax Space, I think. Um, so I think it's just like re reviews and stuff. I did actually watch a few of you a day. Uh, very entertaining. Uh, Mr. Bats Games, uh, Rollercore, Eddie, uh, Dylan Craven, uh, Dane Straight Free and his friend Liam, Retro Heads, Chris and Gav, Cajonus Deloro, Super Quintendo, um, Holster TV and Beth Bear, I think. Yeah. And I'm sure, like I say, I'm sure there's loads of people I've missed. So I really do apologise for that. But um, yeah, Blackpool. I drank too much the first night, made an absolute penis of myself. So if you were there to witness that, I do apologise. <laughs> yeah. But we all do it. So, well, I say we all do it. You know, I'm pretty much always certain to do it. But, uh, yeah, so as for the event, it was all right. So it's the usual arcade machines, consoles set up everywhere. Um, a few pinballs this year, not many this year. There was a v VR room again. Um, now, I normally go just for the, for the meetup, really, and just go in the traders hall, see if I can get some bargains and stuff, which I did, got a couple. Again, prices in the traders hall are. I want to say hi. There's there's a couple of smaller vendors, so that's quite nice. Um, but what did I get? So where have I even put the stuff? I forgot to mention what I picked up on the way down there as well. You see, it's going to be a long video. So the first thing I picked up, and this chap actually recognised me from YouTube. And I should have got his stall name. I do apologise. Um, again, he had a lot of limited run games and stuff like that. But this one I've been after for a while. And it is Octodad, Deadliest Catch. And comes a little box protector. And I think he had 35 in it. And he let me have it for 30. So, very kind of him. Um, if you've not played this game, it's, it's definitely worth <laughs> trying it. Definitely not going to be for everyone. The controls are purposely bad, I think. Just uh, It's frustrating, but it's also hilarious at the same time. But you can get it on pretty much everything, so... And I don't think it's massively expensive. Um, oh, another thing to mention, we did go down with Scott to Blackpool. Again, he lives so close to me, it just makes sense. <laughs> Uh, so that was that, and then um, so I didn't pick up massive amount. I picked up these. This is from a chat who was selling. I want to say coasters and stuff. We had a small selection of games, and I didn't see them the first day. And I feel like I maybe I should have picked up a few more, but the first one I got was Godzilla Save the Earth on the original Xbox, and he had that for four pounds. I see that very well. Um, and I'd seen that in CX that just earlier because me, Dane, Liam and Manu, we wanted to went to CX in uh, Blackpool, uh, grab some drinks and stuff while we were there. Um, and I saw that and I'm sure it was £15. So when I saw it there and I had four quid on, I was like, are these, is this the price? And he was like, he's like, what, what's on it? I was like, four. He's like, you can have it for two quid. I'm just like, yes, I will. <laughs> and... To be honest, it's all there in lovely condition. So I was just like, yeah, not a game I normally pick up, but you know, I think you can trade it in for more than two quid. So um, I'm not though. I just thought I just wanted to add to the collection. So that was that. Yep. Excuse me. And then he had like a small, I say small, um, like a handful of PS One games. Um, I think he had the Grandpa Daughter collection I was thinking about getting. We had these two, um, Wing Commander 3 and Wing Commander 4. And they're both in really nice condition. I think the edges, the sides of them have gone slightly yellow, which I didn't actually notice when I was there. But Or maybe it's the case has gone yellow. Don't know. We'll have to see. They do need replacement cases, but they're both there. They're complete. Um, I think he said seven quid each. 
Was it seven quid each? Or seven and nine? Got both for 15 anyway, I think. Yeah, one was seven, one was nine. So I was usually both for, yeah, both for 15. So wouldn't mind checking them out. Not really sure what sort of games they are, to be honest. Are they like Space Sims or they're like cutscene, like, what do they call them? F and V games. And that was Blackpool pretty much. Oh, shout out to Colonus Del Cojones Deloro 2.0, it's a new channel. Uh, he had a handful of uh, trades and stuff. Um, I spotted this in there and so it's nothing special, it's not an expensive game, but it's Project Gotham Racing 2. Uh, I had this, I'm sure I got it with my Xbox back in the day, I bought Crystal Xbox and this was it. And it's quite hard, it's quite tricky to find the, the non-classics version. Um, I was actually saying to Scott on the way there, because it was in CX and it was the classic version. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a pain to find it. So he had it, so he gave it to me basically, so very kind of him. So that. So now I'm going to go back and show you what we got on the way there. See, I'm doing everything backwards here. We stopped off in Stoke-on-Trent, I want to say. Went to a couple of charity shops. I didn't pick anything up apart from these. Oh, that's in there. Um, some comic books. I'm not sure on the charity shop, but they had four Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 comics up for 3.99. I was just like, ugh. Buy them. <laughs> um, not sure what the hell I'm going to do with them. That was that. And then we stopped off on Forbidden Planet. Now, I'm from Leicester, and our Forbidden Planet is not the best. It's kind of small, it's on two floors, um, and the bottom floor is basically pop figures. But the one in Stoke on Trent was absolutely massive. <laughs> I want to say massive, but again, it had two floors and it was just a bit spacier. I mean, they had shit ton of pop figures, excuse me. Here's some poison. But, um, and I'm very picky about pop figures. I do like them, but I feel if I start buying loads, I've got that sort of, I just, <laughs> I like collecting stuff. And once I get started on something, it becomes an obsession. Um, and it's happened with other stuff, like obviously I've like video games, but I've managed to confine myself to just video games. Um, even like merchandise of games I'm not really a massive fan of. I just try to stay away from that stuff and just focus on games. But um, I saw these and I was just like, I've got to get the whole set. I just have to get the whole set. Um, but it is, and I, I didn't even really did these. Um, Persona 5, pop figures. So we got... Panther, and these are really nice. Uh, Ten ninety nine. I believe they put the prices up. I'm sure they used to be ten pounds. Ten pounds a pop. Ten pounds a pop. Um, there's only four in the set, which was what appealed to me as well. I believe the Joker one is the hardest one to get, and he has like a a variant. Is that is that what they call them in pop figures? A chase chase one. I'm not sure. Um, it's basically him, but without the mask, I want to say. And then the other one I got was the cat. Is it Mor Morgana, they call her in the game? Mona. Um, one thing I will say about Pop Miles, I bought a few like way back in when they were first releasing them, and the paint quality on them was absolutely atrocious. And I've got to say, they've really improved the paint quality on them. So they're definitely made in a better Chinese sweatshop <laughs> nowadays. Um, but still paint in, yeah, paint, in, yeah, paint in perfections. But I mean, it's a £10 figure. I mean, I'm not expecting it to be like really well painted. But um, they had one of the other ones. It wasn't the Joker one, it was Skull. Um, I should have grabbed that because I went up into a few uh, a few forbidden plants now, and they only seem to have this one in stock now. So, tricky to find the other ones. So, after that, we went to CX over the road. It was pretty much directly opposite. Um, and I picked up is it just this. I picked up two things actually. I won't show the other one, but I'll quickly mention it. 
I went there purposely to see, I normally check online when I go to CX, see what they've got. Um, I, you know, maybe it's, maybe I shouldn't just surprise myself, but it had this Shigami Tensei Strange, Strange Journey Redux. And it was up for 35 quid. Check eBay, it's about the going rate for this one, but it's all there. Um, and then when I took it to the counter, she goes, oh, there's a price drop on this one. You can have it for 32, which is quite nice because I've been in CX before and normally they'll charge you the high price because they think, well, you know, why not? Why not get an extra couple of quid out of this person? But um, yeah, it was a young girl and she was just like, oh, it's 32 pounds now. So she gave it for the low price. So slightly under eBay, I want to say. And I'm not sure if it's just a typical Shigami Tensei game. But that was that. And the other thing I bought was a Super Nintendo, a boxed Super Nintendo, Super Mario variant one, like, you see my consoles up there, the, that one there, the sneak peek at the games room. The tour's gonna be coming soon, maybe. I might wait till next year for that. Uh, but they had that, and it was 50 quid, because um, it was classes unboxed, discounted so I've checked the console over and a few you know a few little scuffs and stuff nothing major uh, didn't have any of the books with it though and the game wasn't with it now in hindsight I said just bought the game because they take the game out anyway and sell it separately and it was only six pound which is quite cheap for Super Mario All Stars I know so SNES stuff has dropped um, but for 50 quid I say I paid the voucher for it and I mean it probably cost me about less than 20 quid in actual money. Um, so I've got to get the game and a couple of the manuals and it'll be complete. But um, when I was in Blackpool, there was a chap there and he had a, like a bag full of manuals. And I managed to get this one out of it. So that's got that now. And he said, just give me a quid. So I gave him two quid for it. It's worth two quid all day long. So that was nice to find. Um, so I'll probably make that complete and then take it to a, an event so if I get so many quid for it so it only cost me it's probably gonna cost me 30 quid once once it's all said and done so double money on it no brainer so not bad CX uh, there was a couple of other bits in there they had a lot of retro and a lot of it was missing the manuals and stuff so I'm guessing it was someone's return post so they've been buying it online and just taking them out there but um, yeah, so after that, I went to a local, what's it, local, a, what was it called? I've got the receipt somewhere. Obsolete Gaming. It was just around the corner. Um, and they had some really nice bits in there. Some really, the prices in it there were, I wouldn't say dirt cheap, but they were fair. Um, and I found this, and I was so happy to find this at last. At last. I've never seen this in CX. Never. Never seen it on the website. Never. And this is, it's always over 100 quid. I'm not going to lie. I've never seen it under it. Maybe without the manual. Maybe. But, say, so had this up for £80. It's a Sega Saturn game. Now, there was a woman in there buying something. And I literally saw this game. And then she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then goes, I'll just get out the cabinet for you. So he comes around. And I'm standing there like, no, no, don't be that game I want. And he sort of reached for it and then passed it, not the game behind it. I was just like, oh, thank God for that. So, so he had it for 80. And um, the game in question is, and if you know your Saturn stuff, you'll know this is definitely worth 80 pounds all day long. Three Dirty Dwarves. Oh yes, and it's a fantastic game as well. And the contents. Oh, oh, disc is loose because the case is stupid cases. Be careful with this. There it is. Fantastic condition. Again, you're never going to get these games in mint condition because the cases were made out of the worst possible materials in the world. But uh, Free Day Dwarves say in this condition, you're talking 120 probably on a good day. And the spine on it, the spine, all oh, the spine, a few dinks on it. But and I said to him, I go. You know, because you've got to ask these things. It's like, oh, any movement on the price? That's the first thing I said to him. And he was like, oh, not really. I was just like, no, that's fine. I'll, I'll take it anyway. 
Uh, there's a couple other bits in there, but not say they weren't cheap, but I was like, oh, I might see something in Blackpool I want. So, but then when I went to pay for it, he went, oh, you're paying cash. You can have it for 75 quid. So I was just like, awesome. So 75 pounds for that, which even better. So massive shout out to that bloke who runs the store. Uh, obsolete gaming, Stoke on Trent. Next year, if I go Blackpool, I'm definitely stopping off again. He had a lot of satin stuff, which I think he was saying he he, used, he never got satin stuff in. And then he got like two lots in like the space of a month or something like that. So he had some other expensive games, but I would say I've really got most of them. Oh, oh man, it's nearly an hour. Do I chop the video in two or not? Nah, you'll have to sit through it. <laughs> I'm going to see how many people actually sit through it and then um, in the YouTube app. <laughs> All right. To show next. Let's show you this. A newly purchased game. Amanda bought me this because she owed me a game. <laughs> um, just come out. Luigi's Mansion 3. Comes with this cool steel book. Blows in the dark, supposedly. And uh, this keyring. I think she paid 50 quid for it from the Nintendo store. I know you can get it in Tesco's at the moment for 35 quid. Uh, not 35 quid, two for six there. If you can find a shop which actually has any stock. Um, I actually went to a few because I'm a dirty flipper and I thought I'd go and buy a couple of copies and then flip them into CX. So. But they didn't have any because someone already beat me to it. So that was that. But um, such a fantastic game. The, the best one in the series, personally. Um, the first one is amazing, it's a classic. The second one wasn't a massive fan because I'm not a massive fan of handheld games. I do play them, but I like to sit down on the sofa, big TV. And this is a fantastic game. Probably one of my favorite Switch games. That's that. Speaking of Switch games, I'll show you this as well. Uh, Tesco's had a clearance, and for some reason they were like, reducing to clear like switch certain switch games um there was like donkey Kong country tropical freeze um mario rabbit kingdom and there was a couple of i can't remember exactly what they were but um i sort of i saw people had posted saying oh they're doing cheap switch games and i was just like too late yeah you have to jump on these things early like get down to your local tesco's but i went in the, my tesco and i was just I was just like, it's not a, it is a big one, but it's sort of not one many people go to. So I bought, I was buying something else and I just happened to be at the games counter bit. And I was like, you want to have to have these games in stock. And she brought out the, the tray with all the Switch games in and she had two copies of it. So I definitely grabbed, so I grabbed me a copy of Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle Gold Edition. And I think it was £12 day or something like that. So... So they grabbed me a copy, I grabbed both the copies, so and I sold one because I'm a dirty scalper. Um but they had the normal version in there as well, which was like twelve eleven fifty or something like that. But there's there's a few copies of that. But um I thought I'd just grab the two copies of this, so one for the collection, one to flip on, make my money back for that one. So it's a really good game. Is that Ooh. I don't want to waffle on too long about stuff. Um, charity shop bits. <clears throat> Death Notes. Complete series. Five pounds. Never watched it. So it's fairly decent anime. So for a five off, I think it's 20 quid in CX or something like that. 22. So I went my money back. If I don't like it, I can trade it in. Make my money back. Um, nothing fantastic other than one game, which I'm really happy to find. Two Mario and Sonic at the Olympic doodars for a pound each. So these are the fairly fun party games. Gonna add them to the collection. Don't actually have any, so not bad finds. The this is a quite nice find. I already got it, but I think it was two pounds. Goat Simulator: The Bundle of all games to find in a charity shop. And uh, yeah, I do have this game already. 
it's one of those games it's so it's it's a shit game but it's just hilarious um and it does hold its value it's, it's you go on ebay you're talking 20 quid for a copy so definitely in the future i foresee this game being one which holds its value not saying it's going to be expensive but it's probably going to hold its value Sega Superstar Tennis. I needed it for the collection. Uh, X Men Wolverine Origins Edition. Is it Origins? X Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, pound. These are both quid. Um, this one has a an old Blockbuster sticker on, and a Blockbuster receipt in it. Look at that. And they paid twenty six quid for it. Oh, no, they didn't. They paid 26 quid for stuff at Blockbusters. So, yeah, pound each. So, that's a fairly decent game. <clears throat> a handful of PS3 games. One of them I've been looking for for so long. So happy to have it last. But I've uh, got three games here. Special Forces. Yeah, special, special Forces. It's a PlayStation Move game, maybe. I mean, just you can use it in it. Um, couldn't find it on CX. Went into CX. They don't stock it no more. It's not, but it's not rare. It's like you can buy it for like two quid off eBay. <laughs> so don't know. Um, Alone in the Dark Inferno. Now I've got this on 360, but this Inferno version is like supposedly the the best version because has all the. They basically because the game was such a buggy pile of crap that they was like right let's fix the game before we release on PS3 and so this version is a lot better I mean I quite enjoyed it on 360 um, but yeah so that will be my I might give it a go see how bad it is, is or maybe they fixed it and the one the one when I saw it I was like Siren Blood Curse at last and I believe this is a sequel to the ps2 games forbidden siren um say lovely condition i've seen it on six a few times it's always always in bad condition i think it's about 10 pound game in cx but again in the future i foresee this game being you know it's going to hold its price but um yeah funny funny story that when i <laughs> picked it up at the charity shop i was like Yes, and I was like, I don't have my wallet on me. No, I left my wallet in the car, and I was just like, Oh god! So I sort of hid it behind loads of game uh, DVDs and went back to go back, run back to the car and get my wallet. But yeah, so how to have that last? Whew. Okay, an hour and five minutes. This could be the longest video I've ever done, but we're getting there. We're slowly getting there. What else do we have? Ah, let's do... Yeah. So, let's do a little episode of Random Point of Shit Lewis Buys to Final Fantasy soundtrack on cassette. <laughs> Don't ask me why I bought this. But, uh, yeah, it comes with a reversible sleeve <laughs> for if you want the, the Japanese cover on it. It's a cassette. I didn't even know they still made these, um, but these are made by a like an, a what a chap on Facebook. I think it's called Paperboy Music. I want to say, but he's done the first fantasy and the second one. I don't have the second one because it's sold out because he makes small, real small print runs of stuff. Um, I don't even know why I bought it. I was just like, I don't even have a tape player. Who has a tape player nowadays? I don't know. So I've got to look out for a tape player at the car boot because obviously now I'm collecting these. And speaking of tapes, because you know I'm an idiot, I bought Horizon Chase Turbo on double cassette. This was from a different person. It's the pink cassette. These ones, um, but the cool thing about this is it comes with a mini record. Comes with a mini record. This is why. This is initially why I bought it. Um, 
I'm not sure whether that play on a normal record player or not, but that's cool. That's cool. That is cool. There's that. Another thing I bought here. Um, so my PSP collection, it, it's building and I was like, I really want a PSP 3000 because it runs faster. Um, it's just a better console. I mean, I've got the original PSP, but I thought I, I want a PSP 3000. Um, I do have the Fantasy Advent Children's one, which I don't really want to use. Um, but someone had this on Facebook. I think they wanted like 35 quid for it. Could have been less than that. But it's a Mystic Silver PSP. And he was like, oh, it's not in the best condition, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, all right, okay. Well, I only want it to play to play games on, so. And we'll generally get a bit battered. But you know what? It's in really good condition. So when it turned up, you know, and I appreciate when people do that, when they they don't go, oh, it's in great condition, blah, blah, and then you get it and it's not. Um, but I said this, like, I can't really fault the guy. So there it is. There's nothing. The screen's not scratched at all. Um, it's just generally got a couple of scuffs on the back. Um, it's in really nice condition. So, so it's pretty much the same as the original, but just I think it's slightly thinner. Slim and light. So that's a quite nice find. So I can actually play some of my PSP games now. Well, I could play them before, but now I can play them on that with better load times and stuff like that. Okay, we're getting there. I keep saying that. <laughs> right, some odds and sods here. Catherine, full body edition for the PS4. Wasn't going to buy this, but they had it, I think it was the games collection. It was like 35 quid pre-order. With this groovy steel book. Um, still not played Catherine, and everyone says you've got to play Catherine, you've got to play Catherine. And this one has like an easy mode on it. I know, yeah, <laughs> I know. Wimping out on that. So I kind of think yeah, I've already shown that. Maybe. I apologise, I might have already shown that. I don't know why I was thinking that. Maybe. Ooh. A game from Tesco's, which was a juice to clear, <laughs> Monster Hunter World. £5.50 for Monster Hunter World. Um, it was holding its value quite a lot, and then they put it on Game Pass, so it's not. It's dropped loads, so. <laughs> but one day I might try it. Oh, this is from the car boot. Went to a car boot recently, and this is literally the only thing I bought. Project Cars 2 for the Xbox One for £3. Um, so not a massively expensive game, but three quid. The first one was quite good. I'm trying to go for these as quick as possible. <laughs> Two Xbox 360 games here, and these are Italian imports. I don't even know how I stumbled upon these, um, but they weren't exactly cheap. Uh, they're not on CX, I don't think. I checked CX and I've scanned the barcodes and I couldn't get anything to come up on CX. Um, but they were about 20 quid a pop. Um, Kick-Ass 2. I think they, you can buy them digitally over here. But you can want a physical copy. So Kick-Ass 2. I played it. It's trash. And Bloodbath. And say so they're all pretty good condition. It's got a huge sticker on the manual. It's supposedly new old stock, but it's not. It's not new. You could say it's opened. <laughs> um, so two more for the 360 collection there. Right, PSV games, the mighty PSV up. Chap had loads of PSV games on eBay, and he had most most of them were like weird region exclusives or uh, a lot of Asian imports, which were in English um, and this one is one of them so this is the Asian I want to say Asian version um, of Fantasy 10 2 
and you may be thinking well we got that over here we didn't we got it digitally you get 10 and this was a code um, but over there they actually got an actual cartridge of it and so so the case is all in english for the most part so and i think that was I can't remember how much that was, <laughs> about 20 quid, something like that. And another one he had, and I've been after this, this for quite a while, but they don't really come up on eBay, and when they do, it's normally the Switch version. And if I got the option, I'll go for the Vita version every time. Um, I could have imported it from America, because that's where it's made by Fan Gamer in America. But it is Undertale, and so many people going out of this game. Um, I've got the soundtrack. For some weird reason, <laughs> but uh, console is it's nice. I don't think it's an instruction book, it's like a it's got some gold, it's more of just a little art book sort of thing, but it's quite nice. It's like a reversible sleeve, as well. On that. Um, again, about 20 pounds mark, roughly, or maybe around the 30 pound mark for that one. But I'm not importing it and paying like 40 quid when it's all said and done. Um, I think he had best offers on these as well because I had a ten percent code on eBay, but I offered him more than ten percent off, and he took it, so it worked out better that way. Right, a couple of things for Amazon. Don't normally buy from Amazon because you know they should pay their taxes like everyone else. I pay my taxes. Amazon should pay their taxes. But I got some five hundred five street games from Amazon sealed. Um, yes, you can still buy them. And I've got... I bought these. Demolition Girl. The seal's been ripped on it. Dodgeball. It's trash. And one I actually saw on Metal Jesus' channel. You know. <laughs> if you do watch him. Deep Water. And look from the cover, you think... That's a shockingly bad cover. Because it's like an RPG... <laughs> Like a, it's hard to describe, but it's like an RPG where you go out on a boat. Um, but I, that wasn't enough to get me free shipping, so I bought another copy of Dot of Water, a uh, Deep Water. Um, but this one doesn't have the the Sony seal on it. You see, uh, look, oh, that back one has the pull strip on it. The front one doesn't. Oh, well, that is. Um, Mm. So that was that. We'll get in there. Random shit I buy on eBay on Facebook. Final Fantasy VII for the NES. I don't know why I bought it. I was like, that's cool. I suppose it's a full, full version of Final Fantasy VII. Like, what they call it, a D-make for NES. I don't have my NES set up. My NES is down there, actually. I should really try that. I don't even know if it works, but uh, I just thought, that's cool. It's about 15 quid. Some 3DS games from Game on clearance. So these were 4 for 20 on clearance. And these are literally the only 4 they had. I think they had like one of them. Um, 4 for 20. So we've got Mario Party Island Tour. Smash Bros. Metopia and Fire Emblem Warriors. So anyone who knows anything about 3DS games, you'll know that's a good deal for 20 quid. No manuals or anything, so annoying, but if you've watched Glory Hunter's video, you'll know that game now take all manuals and stuff out of all games. If it's a pre-owned game, they take the manual out and they throw it away. So another reason not to shop at games. Not that newer games come with manuals. Some do, some don't. But uh, yeah, twenty quid. I think the best one in there is probably Smash Bros. <laughs> A CX buy. Shout out to Gorodino Plays. I'm sure, that's his name. Because um, he picked this up recently in CX, and I was like, I didn't even know that was out on three sixty. So I picked myself one up. But I had to order off the internet. And as always, I think it was four pounds, so with one fifty postage, five fifty. But it took, bought me two copies just in case. 
Um, Way of the Samurai 3. And I bought two of them. Just to make sure I got a good copy of it. And guess what? They're both complete. And they both come with a bonus disc. So... The bonus disc is actually behind the other disc. So... That's Archie shouting. So yeah, interested to try that game. Because it could be pretty good. Oh my god. If you're still here, congratulations. So, the final thing. So, it's a new console. But first, when I was buying it, I bought this from game. So it's from game. It's a Wii U Pro controller for seven ninety nine. I thought that was a pretty good price. So I bought the Gears of War Five Xbox One X for four hundred pounds. It came with FIFA and Division Two. And recently I've seen that they dropped price to 370 with FIFA and Division 2. Because I guess no one's buying it. But uh trade in the Division 2. This is just the empty cardboard sleeve. Thought I'd keep it just in case I get it again. But uh it's got some cool stuff in it. Um so I'll buy the Division 2 when it's like a pound, put it in there. Um so I got 12 quid for division on a voucher. Uh, took cash for FIFA 20, got 35 quid for that. Um, sold the code for Gears 5 on eBay for 35 quid. Didn't make the same mistake I did with that stupid Assassin's Creed code. Um, I actually sent it to them. I said, I'm not, if you, I basically said, if you send me a message asking for the code, I'm going to cancel the order. Um, so I sent it through the post, signed for, and nothing ever came back from it, so I guess it wasn't a scam. So I got 35 quid for that. Um, so all in all, I think that's a pretty good price. So it cost me probably like 320 all said and done. And um, it's a really nice console. One thing I will say is when I got it home from game, on the Saturday I didn't look at it, I literally put it down. And then Sunday I went to open it and it was been resealed. So someone cut open the actual seals on it and then they put new seals over it and when I opened it initially if you buy an Xbox you'll know that the top the first thing you see is like the instruction books and codes well, that was gone so I was just like some fuckers opened it took the code out and uh resealed it so I was just like effing and blinded and I was like why don't you search like take everything out of the box I was like well it's not gonna be anywhere else because I literally took the console out and there was nothing else in the box. So I was just like, Fuck, I'm going to have to take it back and they ain't going to believe me, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then I sort of pulled the, like at the bottom, the box where the flaps come in from the side, pulled that back and it was there. The only reason it's see it is because the inside of the box is coloured, textured like the outside of the box has a picture on it. So the, the slip, which the codes come in, has the same pattern on and it was upside down. So it just looked like the bottom of the box. So obviously I had to apologise to Amanda because I was just like <laughs> shouting. I was like, oh, fuck. Um, but yeah, I'm not. Sh it just it's just game for you, isn't it? And they, I don't even know what they're doing half the time. Um, the bloke was trying to sell me a digital Xbox One because I was just like, what is this bloke on about? Um, but yeah. So that is that. So before I go, a couple of things to mention. My computer's broke. Pretty I say broke. It's not fully broke. But I'm having problems trying to edit videos on it. This video would be fine because I just got to edit it, put a start and an end on it. But my other videos I do, the copy videos, my computer basically, when it's on the, the home screen, it will keep refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. Um, so I can't transfer anything over to a different profile because I can't access the the files on my computer. Even when I go in safe mode, it won't let me move stuff. So I'm sort of stuck editing on that that profile. Um, and I don't want to get the computer fixed because it's worthless. So 
I don't want to spend any money on it. So I'm sort of stuck editing videos on the world's slowest computer. I've managed to open and create a new profile on the laptop. So whatever's causing the problem is specific to that profile. Um, but the problem with editing videos in here is I don't have any the stuff I use to edit. I can't transfer it over. So everything's taking forever to do. So I do apologize on the slow upload of these videos. So the CX ones say there's like 10 hours of car boot footage. It's basically stuck on my computer. Um, um, but anyway, I'll stop talking now because this video has gone on for way, way too long. If you're still here, congratulations. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it at that. So thank you for watching this super long video. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.